Aloha and good morning, everyone. My name is Rob Hack. I'm with the Hawaii Pacific Export Council, which is a nonprofit in Honolulu, a uh, offshoot of the U.S. Department of Commerce, and it's our responsibility to help Hawaii companies export and learn how to export. And if you're already exporting, then we'll help you expand your markets. You are here uh, as part of the High Step 2023 program. Uh, that's the Hawaii State Trade Expansion Program managed by DBET. And we are thankful to DBET and their sponsor, SBA in Washington, for the funding that allows us to put on these webinars and seminars and do one-on-one uh, -on -one company mentoring and trainings on export-related activities. So with that, I'd like to introduce Jamie Lum from DBET. She manages the High Step program and she'll explain a bit about uh, the High Step uh, 2023 cycle. And then after that, we have a fantastic series of uh, speakers to talk about various aspects of uh, exporting of agriculture. So Jamie, please. Mahalo Rob and good morning everyone. And thank you for joining us this morning for our session today. And I wanna say thank you to all of our speakers too for being on today, um, especially our Department of Agriculture who we are partnering with on uh, several activities this year. So again, mahalo to everyone. Um, yes, as Rob mentioned, uh, we do uh, administer, uh, this uh, DBED is the recipient of the SBA's uh, STEP grant, which is the state trade uh, expansion program, and in Hawaii, we've branded that as the high step. Um, we have uh, a number of partners that we work with to put the program together, um, including um, the Hawaii Pacific Export Council. Thank you to Rob and uh, the board there. Um, and uh, we work with um, uh, the other, other organizations like the Small Business Development Center, the Patsy Mink Center, our um, our Veterans Business Opportunity Center. Um, we work with the local SBA office um, um, and, and, and many other partners. So again, um, um, we wanna thank you all for being here. So High Step has three components. Um, we have our export readiness. Um, we have our Hawaii pavilions and our company assistance. Those are the three main areas. And thank you, Rob, for putting our website on um, up on the screen, which is invest.hawaii.gov. And everything that I um, mentioned, you can find it under our exporting tab um, under High Step. So uh, this morning, this seminar is part of our export readiness program, which is a series of seminars uh, that are put on um, uh, basically monthly. Um, we do partner with HPEC on this. Um, we did have some several kickoffs last year, and this is actually our first um, of the series for this year. Um, so uh, what we hope to do is to offer companies in information about exporting um, that will help you, especially those that might be new to export, um, learn a little bit, bit about what it takes uh, for exporting. Um, we do have one coming up uh, next Thursday called uh, Export University 101. And that really goes over the basics of exporting. Um, so that's really good for those who are new to export. Um, part of our export uh, readiness is also the one-on-one -on -one, uh, business advising services that are offered by our partner organizations. So when you apply, um, uh, when you register for the High Step program, we will uh, assign you to one of our partner organizations and you'll have at least one session with that uh, uh, organization to go over a little bit about your company and uh, what your export plans are. Uh, if you don't have an export plan, they can help guide you to um, putting one together. So all of this is, uh, as, as the name suggests, to get companies export ready, um, to be able to take advantage of other components of the program. So um, the second component is um, our uh, Hawaii Pavilions. So we do a number of trade shows throughout the year where we uh, recruit Hawaii companies to be part of our Hawaii Pavilion and to go into a trade show under the banner of Hawaii. Uh, we try to make it, um, uh, well, two things. We hope that by doing that, we make it affordable for companies to go into these large shows. Um, and, and then secondly is to um, 
to be exhibiting under the Hawaii banner, which um, has a very uh, strong um, name recognition, first of all, and you know, a lot of people are drawn to that, a lot of buyers, et cetera. So that's part of our Hawaii pavilions. Um, I do wanna point out since Rob um, has that up, um, that um, and we'll probably maybe revise this a little bit as we go along, but um, one of the things we do have new this year, which is a program called the Makuake, which, um, as our uh, website says, it's a pre-sales e-commerce platform, and it's designed for um, companies to introduce new products to the Japanese market. So that's something um, new that we're uh, trying this year. So if any companies are interested in that, um, you can see that it's actually listed under the Hawaii Pavilions. Um, and I'm sure um, uh, Yukashi and Anissa will talk a little bit more about some of the shows that we're partnering on uh, for this year. Um, and then lastly is our company assistance, and that's where uh, companies can apply for uh, uh, directly for funding to be able to support some of the activities that are within their export plan. So we did uh, recently close the applications um, on January 12th, and we are the, in the process of evaluating them right now. Um, but uh, we do make funds available for new to export companies that can uh, um, apply for up to $5,000 and for market expansion companies, they can apply for up to $15,000. And it can be used for a number of things to go to trade shows and trade missions. Um, you can use it to pay for airfare, trade show costs. Uh, you can use the funds for um, things like uh, uh, the US Commercial Service um, uh, products and services that they have, like their gold key service. You can use it um, to send um, uh, sample products to a potential buyer. You can use it to test your product if it needs to be tested in order to be able to certify uh, to certify it to uh, be able to be sold in a particular foreign market. You can use it to um, translate your website uh, into a, a language for a market that you want to go into, or your marketing materials, or also to do some digital marketing. So, um, uh, although it's closed for the year, again. If you participate in um, the seminars and you talk with our partners and, and um, you can prepare uh, for um, the upcoming when we, we do this again in the fall. So um, thank you, that's it in a nutshell. And if you have any questions, I will be uh, here at the end if you have any questions about high step. Thank you, Rob. Great, thanks, Jamie. Um, let me quickly bring up uh, the agenda again. Um, I, we're jumping to Surumi Hamasu from the Foreign Trade Zone, and uh, she is going to speak a, a little bit about the Foreign Trade Zone, but I asked her to join today so that she could talk about Exim, and um, the Foreign Trade Zone is sort of the local representative for the Export-Import Bank of the United States, and I think that Exim is a great asset for our Hawaii exporters. And um, in our agriculture meetings uh, in the past, we have not really talked about Exim. And I think that it's important to do that. And I like the Exim program because it allows our exporters to get very cheap credit insurance so that you can feel very comfortable buying from uh, or selling to foreign buyers who uh, you have not done business with before. And you might be nervous about uh, their credit worthiness and are you going to get paid or what have you. But um, with the Exim program, you can get incredibly cheap and easy to use uh, insurance to back that up and support your sales. So uh, Surumi, if you could jump in and tell us a little bit more about your organization and what you do with Exim. Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks, Rob. Uh, this is Surumi Hamasu from the Foreign Trade Zone. And we're located across the street from Restaurant Row in Honolulu on Pier 2, right next to the cruise ship terminal. And we're known as the hub of international trade. So there's a lot of resources available at the foreign trade zone if you're doing international trade. I think we have seven customs brokers. We have shipping agents, uh, packaging people. And um, and if you if if you are importing products in order to you know manufacture and then export again, then 
um, I think you should basically come and have a chat with us if you, especially if you don't have a customs broker that you're working with. But Rob asked me today specifically to talk about XM. XM is the Export Import Bank of the United States. It's a federal program. And as Rob is saying, it's super helpful if you're going to export because it enables you to have, you don't, it enables you to not worry if your buyer is not going to pay you. That's the bottom line. So you're in, if you're exporting, you're having foreign sales and you have a new buyer or you're worried that your buyer might not be able to pay or if your buyer you know could use some financing to buy your product xm that's what xm bank is there for and we work with a guy named greg moore in the bay area he has uh banks lined up they're they're none of them directly in hawaii but we're able to connect you up with Greg Moore at the XM Bank in San Francisco. And in agriculture, I know the XM Bank has worked with uh, honey exporters. And so it's, uh, and I think they've worked with surf exporters, surf line, maybe on uh, in a number of different and Hawaii companies and coffee. Yeah. So basically, what it uh, what the XM Bank uh, credit insurance allows you to do is to extend credit to your foreign customers. It protects you against buyer non-payment. It improves your cash flow because they'll be able to pay you even though uh, through the bank, basically you'll be able to collect your money through the bank. And it, and it can cover one buyer or your entire por portfolio of foreign buyers. So it's very powerful, very powerful relationship you can have with the Exim Bank. And the Exim Bank also offers term financing. And so it, it, like I was saying, it will offer your buyers financing it. So it eliminates risk of buyer non-payment it extends repayment terms for up to seven years to your customers at competitive rates. And by doing this, it increases your competitiveness because all of a sudden you can offer your customers financing from the United States. And so you can see if you have foreign customers, you're meeting them at these trade shows and you think it, they would be that they would be great, but you just don't know how you're going to carry it. How are you going to carry the risk? The Exim Bank is really the place to, to go. So Rob will give you my contact details. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to call me. Great. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Surumi. Thanks for joining us this morning. And I know you okay. have to take off uh, for another event. So thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Okay. Bye. Um, with that, let's jump over to um, the Hawaii Department of Agriculture. We're fortunate this morning to have you Yukasha Smith so. and Anissa Australia. They're going to tell us about what's going on at the Department of Agriculture this year and their uh, export programs and some of the um, trade shows that they will attend on behalf of Hawaii. So ladies, please. Okay, thanks, Rob. We're going to share our screen so we could uh, man the presentation. Just a minute. All right, so of course, the state of Hawaii offers some assistance and programs. Um, so today, we're going to go over our, we're going to introduce ourselves. And then we'll talk about our international and domestic trade shows that we do put on as a branch. We'll go over our WUSADA programs and assistance, and also our marketing programs that we have, which is Seal of Quality and Made in Hawaii with Aloha. And then at the end of the whole presentation, we'll partake with Q and A with everybody. Um, so my name is Anissa Estrella. I'm an economic development specialist. I'm pictured here on the right. 
And? And I'm Yukashi Smith, also economic development specialist at HDOA. Um, this year will be my 15th year at HDOA, so time flies, but um, I'm, I feel really fortunate to uh, assist farmers and agribusiness owners to export how, how I grow and how I made products to the world. Yes, and this will be my first year and I'm learning everything from Yukashi, so this is very exciting. Um, so first, uh, these are our trade shows that we have. We have international and domestic trade shows. And me and Yukashi do coordinate and attend these trade shows. We uh, like to invite Hawaii agricultural businesses to join us to showcase their products, uh, gain sales leads and to network. Um, we do help with booth fees and we take care of all the admin duties and paperwork that comes with exhibiting at the trade show. So it's a really great opportunity for Hawaii companies to get out there, learn about their foreign markets and get an edge on exporting their products. And those interested in going to any of these trade shows, we do have a booth application form. Uh, you could follow the link below and fill it out online. It'll come straight to us and we'll be able to speak to you more about the trade shows if you're interested. Um, so we're gonna talk about each one in a little bit more detail. So first we'll go over Gulf Food. So this is, um, this year's registration is closed. It's Gulf Food does take place in a few weeks, um, but maybe next year, if anyone's interested, they could uh, apply to go to Gulf Food. Um, it is the world's largest food and beverage event with more than 5,000 exhibitors and almost 100,000 buyers in attendance. And this show takes place every February in Dubai at the Dubai World Trade Center. And a lot of uh, food and beverage items, everything will be there like dairy, beverages, grains, cereals, fats, oils, and also, of course, um, there's an emphasis on halal products. So if anyone does have products that are, fit in that category, it's also a great place to go. Um, next is FoodX. So the FoodX um, uh, Japan trade show, it, this is also the registration is closed for this year. For this year, uh, it's uh, coming March 7 to 10. And uh, for this year, uh, we have a Hawaii Pavilion uh, in collaboration with DBET. So DBET step uh, funding, not just fund, funding this uh, Hawaii Pavilion, but also we collaborate together to recruit companies and operate and manage the booths together. Uh, it's our first time uh, doing um, a trade show together with DBET uh, for a long time but I'm very excited to, to be there this March. And uh, the venue this year will be a Tokyo big site in Tokyo, Japan. It was moved from Makuhari Mese. It's a little bit farther from Tokyo used to be, but it's gonna be a little bit more central Tokyo. So we expect more attendees coming back to this food trade show. The size of the show, uh, this is uh, 85,000 uh, buyers is uh, pre-pandemic days. So it was a pretty large show. It's one of the uh, largest Asian uh, food and beverage trade shows, not just Japanese largest trade show. Um, we are hoping that um, uh, all the buyers are coming back and then uh, more than like 3,000 exhibitors from all over the world uh, will be joining this show. And um, this is very good uh, for any food and beverage items to showcase, uh, including alcohol or non-alcoholic uh, beverages. And um, we've been doing this uh, for the trade show the last maybe 10 years. And then uh, we have tried to minimize the participation fee uh, like $500 to $1,000 per company to participate. Yeah, thanks again for the step grant. We, uh, otherwise we can't do this. So, but uh, this year we are already full, but uh, it's not too early to prepare for the next year's trade show. Um, and I encourage everybody to join uh, Export University and all kind of Japan seminars to be uh, to looking forward to uh, participate this show next year. 
Another show. Oh, okay. So that the third uh, uh, international trade show is funded by a uh, step grant this year is IFIA Japan. Um, IFIA is International Food Ingredients and Additives Exhibition and Conference. It's going to be held in um, May 17 to 19, Tokyo, Japan, the same venue. Uh, it's going to be at Tokyo Big Site. So this is a, a little bit different from food extract show. Food extract show is for the packaged food or or, or like food service retailers. That's uh, if you if you have that kind of uh, products, it's gonna be a good for the food ex. However, this this show the buyers are looking for ingredients, additives, uh, colorings, colorings and flavors. So they they want to use those ingredients uh, to incorporate their uh, supplement or uh, functional food or anything. They want to manufacture uh, your ingredient uh, to, to make some something different. So um, the buyers are very different, uh, very uh, scientific questions they're going to ask. So we are doing this show maybe, um, maybe I think we started like seven years ago. Um, we uh, we still have a spot for this year. If you are um, maybe interested in this show, please let us know right away so we can um, uh, let you know how, how you prepare because it's going to be a little bit different. You don't have a, a wholesale price sheet with you. It's more like a, what's the functionality of your uh, so your ingredients, minerals, so those things. So um, this is the, the third show. And then let's move on to domestic trade show. So um, one of the shows we go to is the National Restaurant Association Trade Show. It takes place in Chicago every May. There's around 43,000 buyers and exhibitors from around the nation. And this show features a lot of food and beverage items and focuses on products that are good for food service in the hotel industry. Um, it will take place at McCormick Place. And um, also this show, we are actually looking for exhibitors. If anybody wants to come, please fill out a booth form on our webpage. Um, this would be really great, again, if you have products that are, work well with the food service and hotel industry. They're looking for any of those kinds of foods that could go um, packaged or for food service. And it, it should be a really good time. So just please let us know if you're interested. And uh, also, we'll be going to the Global Produce and Floral Show. Uh, this show is also open for exhibitors. So please let us know if you're interested. It does focus on produce and flowers. It'll take place in Anaheim this year and all raw produce and value-added products will be showcased. Pretty much any kind of product you see at any supermarket will be showcasing at this show. Um, there'll be around 18,000 to 20,000 buyers present. And this show does ro rotate its location. So this year, since it's in Anaheim, Hawaii businesses should really take advantage of the location since it's so close to Hawaii and shipping won't be much of an issue. Uh, please let us know if you're interested, if your products are in the produce or floral realm, just please let us know and we'll bring you on um, to exhibit with us. So now we'll go over some of our Rusada programs. Okay, let's talk about USADA. USADA stands for uh, Western United States Agricultural Trade Association. So um, Hawaii is one of the member states of USADA. Um, this is a state regional uh, trade groups, uh, one of the four, four regional groups. So USADA is Western and then we have Midwest, North, uh, East and South. So um, this is a, um, a cooperator, one of the hundred of the cooperators that get uh, direct funding from USDA um, MAP program. It's called Market Access Program that is designed to promote uh, food and agriculture export. So um, 
so with USADA, as a member state of USADA, uh, we have access to the federal funding is like uh, six to $7 million annually, but we, we share with starting states and uh, other programs. So, so this is another way that uh, Hawaii companies have access to. So that's what we are going to explain what it is. So the uh, USAD activities have a different type of activities we design and conduct throughout the year. So one of the activities is inbound buyers missions. So um, some cooperators call this reverse trade mission. Uh, probably Suzanne after me will be talking about their, their missions. They, they are part of the cooperators, uh, different cooperators. But um, so inbound buyer missions means um, that uh, the United States uh, member states, right, like uh, uh, Hawaii or Oregon, we partner with the two states in Western uh, United States and bring foreign buyers to come to Hawaii so that Hawaii companies can meet those uh, foreign buyers in the state of Hawaii. So you don't have to travel uh, to see the buyers. Uh, usually we bring like five to seven buyers and then you can meet uh, those five to seven buyers in a half day. Um, this is a very good um, way to um, start explore, exploring, exploring. Um, first meeting with the buyers, you don't have to pay a lot of money to meet with the buyers. So that, that's a very good way to start. And outbound trade missions, which is uh, different, uh, the opposite way of inbound bias missions, um, we will bring US companies to the foreign uh, countries. So then uh, in that foreign country, we will uh, have uh, arranged meetings uh, for, for all the participants. And we have a little uh, different uh, itineraries like uh, market briefing by the USDA officials and um, uh, facility tours or retail tours to learn about the market. And then usually have a networking uh, reception at night. So uh, uh, a lot of um, activities in one trip you can uh, experience that's that's another activity is very popular. And um, if you are ready to go to the international trade shows um, to have a booth, so USATA has, has the uh, USATA pavilion inside the USA pavilion. And we provide interpreters, we, we can you know um, provide the same uh, like a furniture, like countertops and shelves and lighting and the overhead sign is like a so united uh, everything is in the same same way so so that buyers come to the USA pavilion and then specifically looking for the US products and during the pandemic we had to do the virtual trade missions uh, everything is virtual so now we have zoom uh, it's convenient you don't have to travel um, however, I, I feel um, we, we're getting uh, mixed feedback right now. So now we can travel, uh, not many travel restrictions. Um, I think uh, both buyers and suppliers uh, would prefer to meet in person, but we still have virtual uh, trade missions. Um, you can sign up as well. And fund match program is a um, company financial assistance program. Uh, it's a uh, um, you can if you sign up this program, you will be get reimbursed like okay, fifty percent up to fifty percent of your export marketing uh, expenses. So, but you have to file a lot of paperwork and a lot of rule, rules to follow. Uh, but there is a really good manual you can read or you can ask USATA how you're going to join this program. Mm -hmm. the, the, the point is that it's a reimbursement. You have to pay in advance. And so that's, that, that's a catch. 
Also, USADA provides educational seminars. If you go to USADA website, uh, there are tons of videos, you know, how to export, how to, how to, how to, you know, those videos are very educational and informative. Uh, please uh, try to go and check it out. To participate in any USADA activities, the qualification is that products has to have at least 51% US origin in content by weight, excluding water and package. So that's the that's the key. You don't have to be made in Hawaii or growing Hawaii, but have to be uh, made in US. So, and uh, the USADA website is usada.org. So let me talk about uh, this year's um, USADA events that Hawaii is managing. We have two activities um, plan, uh, planned for this year. One is China Consumer Oriented Inbound Mission, June 26 to 30. We, will, uh, we, we are going to bring um, five to seven buyers from mainland China to come to Honolulu. Probably like in 19, uh, 29 or 30, um, and you can meet with them uh, in Honolulu somewhere. Uh, probably, um, yeah, we, we always um, ask uh, for in trade zone conference room, uh, which is very nice location and then ample parking. So um, it might be a um, foreign trade zone, but we will uh, announce when uh, it's everything finalized. And another one is Alba Mission to Seoul, Korea, uh, which will be scheduled uh, October 30 and November 1st. So there's um, uh, some photos. Uh, uh, the, the first photo is uh, one one meeting. You have a supplier on the left and then buyer on the right. And then we have interpreters um, each meeting. And then the, the, right, the right side, that's, that's how the meeting um, take place in one hotel room is very uh, nice, um, everything um, going on. And then the, another photo is the market briefing by the Seoul uh, USDA FAS agent. So you can go to visit um, ATO office. Uh, ATO means uh, agricultural trade office in Seoul. So then they can give you the insight of market and we go to a retail tour. Um, E-Mart is one of the largest uh, retailer in uh, Korea. So you can actually look at the package a price and you can taste and smell it. That's those experiences like a price less. You, you can't do that virtual. And then the last photo is a networking reception. That's after we have a, a 10 or 15 meeting with the buyers. We uh, invite buyers to stay uh, to, for the extra hours to network with suppliers. So those are the, um, some example of the USATA programs we're doing. So if you are looking for um, uh, export, uh, we encourage everybody to sign up with usata.org to just create an account. And then if you pick up the focus market, you will get a direct email. So this is an upcoming event in Vietnam or Australia, a different market. You, you don't have to every time go to the uh, website and look for the event, but you can get the email uh, directly and it's free. And USADA is uh, located in Vancouver, Washington. Um, you can email them or call them. They have excellent customer service. You, they can um, answer any questions. But of course, um, Anissa and I are here locally. And if you have any questions, we are happy to answer uh, those questions as well. OK, so the, the next, the last item is the marketing programs we are managing uh, here at the HDOA. So we always say um, export is good, but uh, make sure you have to have, your products have to be recognized 
in the local market as well, because whenever you meet a new buyer, they want to do research. They, and if, if they do any research online and then your products doesn't come out, you know, um, they, they, they'll be skeptical. So we really encourage everybody to get uh, and join our um, kind of lower programs. Uh, one is Hawaii Sea Level Quality. And this is a green logo and it's been here for over maybe um, 15, 16 years already. So um, there is a certification process. Um, your products have to be at least 51 Hawaii origin uh, agricultural ingredients and value. The value have to be added uh, here in Hawaii as well as your ingredients. And um, we have uh, some uh, certification processes. Um, uh, actually, somebody has to go to your farm or manufacturing facility, make sure that you, you have all um, everything you're complying. But once you are getting in, uh, renewal will be just um, paperwork uh, annually. And as very small application fees, it's $50. For, up, for application fee and then pro program participation fee uh, means when you use the logo that goes to uh, the programs. So those very small amount of fees go to the SOQ special fund, which is dedicated to promote S SOQ program. So we will try to do the self-sustain here, but uh, so everything helps. And um, there are many benefits to be the SOP program. Uh, you can get uh, free professional photography, free rack cars and other free collateral. And uh, we have a talented you know, social media people. So they are doing digital and social media promotion. And when we have money, we do run TV campaign or a print campaign or any other media campaign as well. Um, our other marketing program that we have is Made in Hawaii with Aloha. Um, this program is very easy to apply to because you can do it right online and it's free. Uh, each product on the application needs to have 51% or more of the costs incurred to make the product. Those costs need to be incurred in the state. So that could include uh, labor, packaging, and more. Um, there is a formula on the application form to help you calculate this. And there's also an annual renewal, but just like seal of quality, it's mostly just filing paperwork to stay in the program. Um, you will also receive a digital imprint of the logos and you can add that to your labels so you could differentiate your products as made in Hawaii from others that aren't made in Hawaii. And um, this program is, um, we do try some, sometimes there's radio promotions, there's also um, digital promotions and social media promotions for these products that are members. Um, you don't get a photo shoot like with seal of quality, but this program is free. So that's why mostly it's just to help you market your products as made in Hawaii. Um, and that concludes our presentation. But as you can see, we do have a ton of different um, programs and trade shows that you can join with us. And please Contact us if you have any questions about exporting or if you do want to come with us to any of these trade shows. Um, we'd love to have you and we'd love to showcase Hawaii ad. Thank you. Great. Thank you, ladies. That was a wonderful presentation. It seems like you have so much going on this year and it's great to have the pandemic over and we can get traveling and exporting again. So uh, thank you again. I'm sure at the end there'll be um, some questions for you, for you all. Uh, our next speaker is Suzanne Schreiner from uh, the Synergistic Hawaii Agriculture Council, also colloquially called SHAC. So Suzanne, welcome and uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Um, I am the Executive Director Administrator of the SHAC program and I'm gonna speed run through this because there's a lot to cover in a little amount of time. 
But I, I did want to second what you've already heard. Um, I've been exporting coffee for about 20 years as a grower, and the XM Bank program saved my bacon with a with a Chinese grower with a Chinese buyer who didn't pay for seven months. Um, and Wusada also got me through the recession. So these are excellent programs and I urge every grower to take advantage of them. So what Chef does is we're a consortium of the various uh, commodity groups, coffee, macadamia, floriculture, and papaya. And what we do is we overlay marketing and science space grants for our commodity groups. So we can do the heavy lifting for them um, on a generic basis, we're reaching out, we're marketing um, not a specific company, but specific products in the marketplace, like Hawaii coffee, for example. And like Wusada, we take part in the market access program. They're a sister program for us. And we are looking to specifically build export markets for our commodity groups. And in co for coffee, that means uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and mainland China. Um, Taiwan is a fantastic uh, coffee market, and we're out there, we're marketing Hawaiian coffee uh, generically in these groups. Um, Canada is our other market for our other commodity groups, great market, English-based, very easy to cross the border with. And so if you're in one of our commodity groups, you can tag team onto our activities. We can bring you in to some of the sales events. Um, we cannot promote your company specifically, but we promote all companies equally. And you don't need to be a member of a commodity group to join us. We, we are equal access for everybody. Um, the second half of the, the foreign ag service program is the task grant. And for example, with papaya, we were able to get food safety certified in China for the papaya products. Um, with coffee, we had issue with coffee berry borer impacting quality. So we used a task grant to train growers how to respond to that. So if your industry has a specific issue that it's struggling with, we might be able to help with that. Um, also, we directly interface with the ag trade offices in the embassies, and you don't need me for that. It's a little known secret that if you reach out to an ag trade office in a country like, say you wanna to export to South Korea, they will not only give you buyer lists, of in-country folks who may want your products, they will also connect you directly. So it's a tremendous resource, one we use extensively. I'd be happy to connect you if you're not sure how to get there, um, but it's also something you can do yourself. So we come in with a high level look at our markets. Um, what do our commodities need to be aware of? What's, what's, what are we looking at as far as selling a product? We, we don't just approach this casually, it's a very directed approach. And we look at the constraints and we try and overcome those constraints, both on a wholesale side and a consumer side. What's gonna interfere with you getting your product out there and sold? And then we turn around and we use this money to do activities and you can tag team with these activities. Uh, we have social media, you can share our posts, you can follow us and we're happy to share the collateral that we use in the marketplace for that. We're very specific with our marketing. You can see here with papaya, we're, we're educating the consumer and, and the wholesale buyers, um, not just pretty pictures, but how you use a Hawaiian product. Um, we've had a lot of success with coffee in Taiwan. We do some trade shows. We bring buyers in. Um, we do videos to show um, how how the product is made and the various regions in Hawaii. And I wanted to give you a view of our, of our shack booth here in Taiwan, who Ralph was very involved in. He's one of the next speakers. So um, we market under, not shack, but under the Hawaii Coffee Association. We wanna build our brands up. And what we found over time is that the barrier for Hawaii is really having enough product to sell in the market. Hawaii is in such demand whether it's coffee or papaya or floriculture that frequently we can't meet that export demand. So for you as a seller, it's tapping into the right methods to sell your product. So don't be afraid to get out there, really um, be ready to sell. And if I have one final piece of advice for you, it would be to use the Aloha Advantage. Uh, US 
Ag products have a tremendous re reputation because of our uh, food safety rules and our labor laws. And when you overlay the vision that people have for of Hawaii, your product is going to sell. It's not, there's not any question about it from my aspect. If you market Hawaii as a part of your brand, you will sell that brand internationally. We are in demand for everything we produce here. So if you have any questions, if you are one of our commodity group, if you're a, in one of our commodity groups, feel free to email me and I can connect you with more resources. If you're not, but you feel like you have questions, I'm also happy to answer them. Um, if you have a commodity group that's not a part of us, I'm also happy to talk with you further about that. So um, thank you for your time this morning and go sell Hawaii. That was a fantastic presentation, Suzanne. Thank you very much. Um, if you don't mind, could you email that to me so I can send it out to the audience uh, with the other presentations? Um, that was Absolutely. really great. And uh, we greatly appreciate you being here. Suzanne has to jump off and head to another meeting. So I'd actually like to interrupt the flow here and just take any questions if there are any uh, for Suzanne. Otherwise, um, just email me your questions or text them to me and um, I'll get the questions to Suzanne later. But thank you. I'm so happy to hear about the success of our companies in Taiwan. I think Taiwan is a wonderful market. It's a great place to visit, a great place to do business. and. I'm so happy to hear that uh, things are going well for our coffee uh, exporters there. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks everyone uh, for that. And let's jump ahead now to um, Glenn Stocko. If you could chime in for just a second and tell us about Hawaii County's uh, export uh, resources. I know there's so much going on. And um, when we talked about a similar topic last year, um, you had a, uh, some great comments. So Glenn, please. Thank you, Rob. So the uh, County of Hawaii supports, you know, our agriculture industries um, with their, um, as much as we can with the exporting of their products. And typically we work through their nonprofit organizations. Uh, this would be through a grant to attend uh, trade shows on the mainland, uh, perhaps put on conferences and invite buyers to come and meet the growers. Uh, we've also supported social media programs to promote their products, um, put up displays and sponsor booths and so on. Um, our grants typically are limited to about $25,000. Anything more requires our, uh, a resolution through our county council. And uh, I've heard of um, the county grants also being used to match state and federal grants. And, you know, I was told that there's a multiplier effect when they're using our funds to match. Uh, we work with state and federal agencies, such as the Department of Agriculture and APHIS, uh, to support legislation and research that would affect specific industries. Um, this could be to increase uh, exports to other countries or to oppose the relaxing of rules that you know, would allow foreign products into Hawaii and the United States that may threaten the industries with a reduced market value and the accidental importation of invasive species. Uh, when Hawaii exports products, say, to California, the quarantine requirements are very strict and could result in shipments being returned to Hawaii or even you know, they may even have to destroy them. And just to recap, some of our major export industries are macadamia nuts, papaya, pona and kau coffee, uh, potted and cut flower orchids, potted foliage, and palms. But we also have a couple of emerging industries with excellent uh, export potential, the uh, charwo avocado and cacao. Um, you know, a few years ago, the protocol to allow the shipping of charo avocado to the mainland, the 32 northern tier states, was established. And, um, you know, the county of Hawaii was asked by the Hawaii Avocado Association to help them uh, to get this started. And what we did was we set up a small certified pack house to, you know, explore the federal requirements for the grading and sorting of the charo avocado. 
and uh, also to see how difficult the uh, these requirements would be to get avocado to the mainland. And it took uh, it was a learning process, but it was not as difficult as some people thought it might be. Now it also required uh, work on the part of the growers to do their end. Uh, part of the requirements, and then also with the certified pack house, their record keeping and grading. But what happened was that, you know, this paved the way for a private pack house to be certified and started working with, you know, other growers to export uh, Shargo avocado to Washington state. And we also got inquiries from about two or three outsiders who wanted to set up these uh, pack houses. Um, from what I was told by the uh, by the pack house that's currently shipping avocados, those who those growers who sell them sell their uh, avocado through that pack house are receiving about seventy five percent more than if they were to sell it locally. The other uh, crop that we're looking at is the Hawaiian cacao industry. Now, the cacao is processed into chocolate. And I've heard reports of an eight ounce bar in California selling for about $17. The problem is that we don't have enough growers of cacao to feed the processors as basically what Suzanne had mentioned. So the farms, you know, we have typically small growers and um, the Cacao Association has membership with as little as one tree to several acres. Uh, we are working with the University of Hawaii to provide more technical support um, and supporting the efforts of their organizations to encourage more producers or to have the producers increase their production levels. So uh, we are involved directly with the organizations to promote and market their products and also support the producers and proce processors to grow and produce more products for export. So that's about, you know, the extent of what we do. Thank you. Wow, Glenn, thank you very much. That's really interesting. Um, while you were saying that, I was just texting my wife, telling her to go out back and plant some cacao trees before I get home. <laughs> $17 for one bar is pretty amazing. Okay, yeah. uh, well, thank you for that. I think it's fantastic that Hawaii County has these resources available there, and we greatly appreciate you uh, joining us today to discuss that. Um, speaking of uh, exporters, um, I was looking for, well, let me backtrack for a second. I think some of our new to export companies that are thinking about exporting, they start to research the topic and they think, wow, this is really overwhelming. There's so many things to think about, uh, shipping product to this country or that country. Um, there's inbound tariffs, there's uh, uh, pesticides I have to be concerned about, there's um, this and that, and they get sort of overwhelmed. And I don't think that that's necessary. There's a lot of people here in Hawaii to help you overcome any of those obstacles and uh, teach you about it so that you don't have to waste a lot of time and energy and money on that. And also, um, I think that there are a lot of small companies in Hawaii who are doing a fantastic job of exporting. And so I wanted to find one of those and we got one to uh, fortunately speak today, um, Rusty's Hawaiian Coffee. And we have Ralph Gaston, who's going to talk a little bit about his export success. And I know, um, as Suzanne had said, uh, uh, Ralph, you were recently at the Taiwan coffee and tea show. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about that and just give us a little bit of oversight of your export journey and maybe share some uh, nuggets of knowledge that you've learned along the way. But thank you very much for being here today, Ralph. Yeah, thank you, Rob, and good to see Glenn and, and obviously Suzanne, I see a lot, and Jamie, um, Yukashi, and everyone that, that we've worked with throughout the years. As you said, I'm with uh, Rusty's Hawaiian, a, a small farm, mill, and roastery in Kau. We also have another company, which is uh, Isla Custom Coffees, which does uh, green beans, um, green bean exports. So I'm going to try to get this up to a full screen so you can kind of see the Oops. 
see the I, I'll just move the screen this way so you can see more of it but I wanted to kind of give a brief brief visual of the journey that we've taken um this is obviously the goal now this is a, a shipment that we just did to Japan and everyone doesn't ship container loads it could be as small as a box a, a full 100 pound box or a small half pound box of green coffee unroasted but we're happy with this and the su success because there are a lot of challenges to ship to different countries one of them being um health health related um restrictions in other countries what you spray if you have to spray for coffee leaf rust if you have to spray something to combat berry borer what are the minimum residue limits available uh, allowed in other countries so despite the limits in japan we're able to get a container of coffee shipped to them and we're very happy about that it has been a bit of a long journey um this is a picture from food X in about 2016 and it kind of gives you a sense of what we've been doing with rusty's wine we have a smaller farm mill roastery we're proud of what we do but we do a very limited work in japan and one of the great things about doing these shows, which we did in conjunction with DBET and HDO in the past, is you get to meet buyers in the marketplace. So not only do you get a sense of a company name and maybe where they sell, but you get to know who the people are. And that face-to-face -face, um, meeting is very, very important to continued sales in an export market. Um, we have a picture here, and that, that's my wife, Joan, with me and, and a couple of buyers we did meet a couple of years ago in Japan. We met them at the show, and then we were able to follow up and meet them in person. And I think that that's big for smaller companies because on the other end, the people that are buying the coffee want to have a story to, to connect to as well. Not just coffee from Hawaii, but what region, what farm, what variety. That all helps them tell a story to their customers and helps to enhance the particulars of the Hawaiian coffee brand. Um, I get to the last photo real quick, and this is the booth that we did for uh, Shack and the Hawaii Coffee Association in Taiwan this past November. And um, as I mentioned, as you mentioned, Rob, I am a, a secretary and board member of Shack in addition. So our goal here was to open the Taiwanese market up to different regions of Hawaiian coffee and in turn open it up to other smaller um, sellers of Hawaiian coffee. It's open to all sellers, but we wanted to focus on smaller businesses so they get a, a way in. And we were able to do that. Even in the past two months, because of this show, we've had well over $10,000 of coffee sales, smaller sales of 200, 300 pounds at a time, but we're seeing a consistent return of um, people who visited here for a reverse trade mission and then attended the show and they're buying coffees. The biggest thing I wanted to say, and I'll say it briefly because I know we have one more presentation and questions to ask, is the biggest obstacle I found kind of mirrors what she's answered earlier, and it's it's coordination. It's if you need to get your coffee certified, how do you do that? Where can you go? If you need a USDA phytosanitary inspection, what do you do? How do I talk to the Hawaii Department of Agriculture's plant quarantine branch to make sure that my packaging is correct and the coffee can move inter-island? If you need the XM services um, because you have a buyer on the other end and you're worried about payment, that's key. That That's happened to us once too, and it's, it's a big concern. We lost a little bit of money on that because we didn't know about XM at the time. And, and how do you keep these things all coordinated so not only you know where to go, but how the timing needs to go from dropping the coffee at the middle to getting it certified to getting it shipped to getting the money and to making sure you're protected those steps can be that coordination can be very challenging to learn and it's one of the key concerns i've heard from farmers here in kau when after they had a look at our program itself so happy to see this event today happy that we can present these different aspects to everyone in the attendance and thank you for having me here i'm happy to answer any questions uh afterward mahalo guys Thanks so much, Ralph. That was wonderful. And I applaud your efforts and your success. It's so great to see our companies out in the world and uh, particularly in Taiwan. That's just fantastic. So um, our final speaker of the day is Brian Suzuki from Hawaii Air Cargo. And um, I like to ask Brian to speak at these events because he's really the uh, godfather of uh, air shipments uh, from Hawaii with um, 
many decades of experience in this area. And I think that I meet a lot of uh, Hawaii companies who sort of fall down on the issue of logistics and shipping, and they, they don't think about it until the very last second in the process of completing a transaction with a foreign buyer. And I think that the sooner you can get uh, Brian uh, involved or a freight forwarder involved in your um, export process, the, the better it is for you and the more margin you can make from this transaction. So with that, let me uh, introduce Brian. And uh, Brian, I'll, I'll go through your um, presentation. It, just tell me when you'd like me to change slides. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Excuse well, me. Robert, getting my slides up. I just wanted to say that uh, what you've heard thus far is very, very important. And uh, my last segment, usually it's last, but just to let you know that you should, before you even meet one customer, potential customer, you should know what to expect uh, as far as shipping costs. And uh, shipping has a lot, of, lot to do with um, the understanding because I've been all around Asia, all around the world for that matter, at different trade shows. And when people say, well, the flight from Hawaii, Hawaii to say Tokyo, Osaka, or to Beijing, uh, is so long that it must be expensive. But to let you know, um, next slide, I'm just gonna, let's see, maybe I can, can I? Maybe not, but at any rate, people just don't. Um, Rob, can you see my pointer? I guess not. Any next slide. In Hawaii, we have just air and ocean, and uh, a lot of times, as you begin your uh, sales, you don't have enough to make a container. There are no less than container uh, shipments to uh, say Asia. Uh, the only way is to send it to LA, and then. Uh, join in any consolidations out of there, but that's an additional cost. But like I say, <clears throat> people don't realize that uh, next night air is very, how do you say, inexpensive, and you don't realize it, but people always say at these trade shows that, oh, it must be expensive. But believe it or not, we live in Hawaii. What do we have? Tourism. All the flights coming into Hawaii, whether it's from the mainland or from Asia, they come in full of passengers, or at this time, little less, but well, uh, they come in full of passengers and cargo from Asia. And the cargo, the planes are loaded with cargo. There are some flights coming in with no passenger, just cargo only, because of the uh, background or the backlog on the West Coast for ocean freight. And they come here to Hawaii, and then they're transferred back to uh, uh, domestic carriers, back to the mainland. But the thing that you have to realize is that the flights going back to Asia it's empty of cargo. We don't have enough things to go. So all the carriers are anxiously competing for every ounce of cargo they can get. And believe it or not, my cost and your cost to say Tokyo is cheaper than flying something from Honolulu to say Los Angeles. It's hard to believe, but that's what you need to understand and learn about. And uh, also the cost of shipping, you know, these are slides of the carriers that uh, we uh, try to uh, move things on, but uh, gosh, okay, for the next slide, I'm gonna go real quickly with the uh, slideshow, but uh, showing that, you know, we, this is a underbelly of uh, where passenger flights uh, handle their cargo. And the next slide shows the uh, uh, freighter service, things that uh, topside cargo, and then there's a lot. Unfortunately, we don't have any freighter service to Asia from here directly, but uh, they also, from here to the West Coast, we do have freighter service, uh, daily freighter service, as a matter of fact. Uh, next slide. This is inside of a 747 freighter. Next slide. Okay. This is one that's forgotten a lot of times for shipping, uh, postal service, Next slide, they have these uh, uh, boxes of um, flat rate boxes. And I, you know, I, I do an auditing for anybody who wants to audit their shipping uh, needs. And a lot of people um, have already set in place good, good services. 
but that they need to know that. On the other hand, a lot of people that don't, and I've saved customers, you know, the big bucks on their shipping just because I when they audited the bills, I said, hmm, you're not doing this right. I'm not selling myself, but I'm just selling that person to looking at what criteria uh, they are supposed to be looking for. And somebody was telling me I have the best rate, but the best rate might be only the price per pound per kilo. On the other hand, you have all kinds of rates. And again, the rates could be including um, what does not include fuel surcharges, which is higher than the price per pound. Rate. And uh, you have security surcharges, et cetera, et cetera. But again, shipping basics, they're directional. Coming from Japan uh, versus going back, the cost of going back to Japan is about a third or more. Actually, it's cheaper than flying something from Seoul, Korea to Tokyo. And the people in Japan cannot understand that. So you have to be able to explain that we have a lot of belly space going back to Asia. Therefore, you know, we can do a lot of that uh, type of, uh, how do you say, making the product affordable. And as a matter of fact, I had a customer for years that just, you know, before he used to tell me, don't tell my competitors that I'm, I'm using air from Hawaii. And I said, so who are, who are your competitors? I want to find them out to teach them. But they say that Hawaii products are the best. And uh, what he was buying is uh, uh, certain commodities, but then they're good stuff, but they didn't realize the cost wasn't as high as they thought, or thought it was going to be. And it became uh, for him a trade secret. And um, he was able to compete uh, be better with their competitors. At any rate, at the bottom of this list, so is packaging. And that's very important from the get go because, you know, in cargo, we, we charge by the actual weight or dimension weight. Dimension weight is in the size of the thing. So, so anyway, the uh, next slide, I'll just get through this real quick. Like, this is another one that's very important how you um, sell your products. Okay. And then that's why the Exit Bank was very, very important for cargo insurance, credit insurance. And uh, most of the discounts are for prepaid freight. A prepaid meaning you have to pay the carrier here, which is paying to a foreigner here. Because if you send it, Freight collect, the price is going to be the regular tariff rate plus a surcharge or a handling fee. And that's then you're going to lose all the discounts. So it's best when you negotiate, have them say, who can get a good price? Your product will cost, I mean, my product will cost this, includes freight. So think, think about it that way. Next slide. Okay, when you are selecting, there's so, so many different ways. We have good uh, companies here, all the carriers, all the freight forwarders, air freight forwarders, surface forwarders, uh, good to uh, I know. But remember, some commodity, uh, commodity requires special handling, so you have to choose a freight carrier or, uh, you know, uh, because of that. Uh, destination, they have to know your documentation to make sure that things are, are there. And also small package specialists. I mean, the post office, CPS, FedEx, they're all good carriers. As a matter of fact, um, I founded the Air Cargo Association of Hawaii to include everybody. And we meet monthly. And uh, we just talk about our concerns within our industry. So next slide. Okay, one thing to remember, air freight is not regulated. Therefore, it's a buyer beware market. So the shipper is ultimately responsible for any shipping deficiencies. And uh, so packaging is important. Selecting a carrier is very important. So shop around. And if you get a rate from one person, make sure that you ask for the same kind of quote from another, just to double check. And then you'd be surprised the differences that might be in our industry. Uh, next slide. This is just, uh, this is very important. It was brought up to you by DBED and VOA, going to trade shows are very, very important. Next slide, because you see not only, again, you have to have a bit of language that you're showing it at. Uh, next slide, but it's important to know your competitors. So this is the Hawaii booth, and I think this was in Beijing, uh, China. And uh, uh, this is something that I put out, oh, but it's old, it's not on the market anymore, not in any store. But this Hawaii product went to market with the Department of Agriculture or the University of Hawaii uh, Agriculture Department and myself put together this 
how to get your product to market. But that's what we talk about. And we classes that you attend, whether it's um, uh, this introduction or uh, export one or other one. It's important to know these things. Uh, last slide, I think. But if you have any questions, I'm not in the office as often, so use my cell phone if you don't have it, or my email, and uh, that way I can get back to you. But it is something that is important to think about the shipping costs before you even go to meet with your first customer or potential customer. And that way you can get uh, better at this uh, understanding of them. I, you know, like I say, I went to some place and they tell me, oh no, it's gonna be expensive. Oh, let's cut flowers and say, what if it gets uh, denied and you have to have it uh, uh, fumigated at destination? Well, there's answers to those kinds of uh, questions. When you talk to the supplier, they know the regulations and we just don't, if it doesn't pass and they gotta be fumigated and the product is destroyed, what kind of guarantees would it give you a buyer? Things like that. And you'd be surprised uh, that they say, well, we'll just send them another shipment, something like that. And that is enough for some buyers to say, okay, it's willing to, I'm willing to take a chance. So anyway, don't forget to try to call me uh, whenever we get a chance. And uh, that's it. Great. Thank you so much, Brian. It's, it's great to have you here. And um, I reiterate what I said earlier, and I think Brian just said it again himself, is uh, please get Brian or another freight forwarder involved in your process as soon as possible before your booking orders so that uh, they can advise you on the specifics for your product and the market that you're shipping it to. I promise you getting them involved sooner rather than later will save you a lot of time and money. So with that, I'm going to open it up to q and I'd like to remind everybody that I will send to all of the attendees this agenda. And um, I have put key websites here at the uh, bottom where we can link to uh, uh, the various speakers today and their organizations and some other export related organizations that I think are important for you to have. Uh, before we sign off though, I. I want to make sure that we go through a couple of these very important websites. Uh, if you just bear with me for one second. So um, the Hawaii Pacific Export Council, my organization, we have an archive of all of these webinars of which this one you're attending now will be on our YouTube archive here in a few days after I do some late editing, but these uh, webinars go back now several years with uh, lots of different topics, country specific, uh, topic specific, such as finance or IT or what have you. Um, here is the website of the Hawaii Pacific Export Council. Here is uh, the Small Business Administration who is responsible for funding the STEP uh, grants nationally. Uh, and then DBET at invest.hawaii.gov, who's responsible for the high step program. Uh, there's uh, HDOA here and the market development branch. Um, Musada, which was alluded to by um, the HDOA ladies. Uh, here's SHAC. Um, here's uh, VBOC, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, which uh, Jamie Lum had alluded to. Here's Exum. And uh, Hawaii SBDC, which I think is a fantastic organization that can um, consult your business all, all throughout the business process. And um, the Patsy Mink Center uh, uh, that we uh, had talked about very early in the program. So I wanted to make sure we showed you all of those and uh, it, don't worry about writing them all down because they, these websites will be listed uh, in the, um, the PDF that I'll be sending around. So let's open it up to questions. There's uh, one that's coming in for Department of Agriculture regarding the China buyers coming in June. What kind of buyers are these? I think I recall that you said that they were consumer oriented buyers. Maybe you can um, explain that a little bit more. Yes, yeah, consumer oriented focus means uh, both retailer and food service. So it it's like a 
very general, very broad category, I would say. So um, the products can be included any uh, beverages, food items, um, packages, uh, food, spices, confectionery, uh, sauces, condiments, even, con yeah, so anything, actually. I've been to some of those inbound buyer events, and they're the ones that I've been to have all been at the foreign trade zone in Honolulu. And it's very interesting to go in and meet with those buyers. It's kind of like a speed dating uh, mm -hmm. where you go table to table and meet with the buyers. And it's really, really effective. Um, the, this incoming China uh, buyers group, are they staying in Honolulu only or will they go to any neighbor islands? So. Uh, for example, if a big island uh, company was interested to meet with them, would they have to come to Honolulu or how does that work? Yeah, usually the, uh, for the logistics reason, um, most of the buyers, we, pl we plan to uh, have them stay in Honolulu. And I, I guess um, the participation is a key. So we, we have to recruit the companies to participate and then somehow when we do Honolulu, it was it is more successful than doing in on the other island because if we do other island and for example if we do big island from Kauai people it's hard to go to uh, big island um, versus if we are in Honolulu Kauai people can come and then big island people can come yeah. So just to be clear for the attendees, uh, if you haven't been to the foreign trade zone, it's really easy to get to from Honolulu Airport. Uh, you, know, you don't have to rent a car. You could easily take a taxi or Uber. It's like maybe 12 or 15 minutes max uh, to get to the foreign trade zone at that Pier 2 right on Ala Moana um, Boulevard across from the main uh, U.S. federal building at 500 Ala. I highly encourage you to, to uh, try that and, and get involved in that buyer's program. Okay, any further questions from the audience? Um, I had one uh, question somebody texted to me. Uh, that I think this is more for Jamie uh, Lum, but the um, Department of Ag uh, ladies could chime in. Um, most of the programs that we have done have been uh, targeted more at non-agriculture products, right, uh, exporters. And so the question is, uh, for an exporter, do they follow the same process for uh, company assistance uh, uh, that a, a non-agriculture company would if they're applying for company assistance or the, any of the pavilions uh, like Tokyo International Gift Show or something like that, would, would they, is the process the same for an ag company than and a non-ag company? Uh, to answer that, yes, it's, it's the same, no matter what type of company you are. Uh, the only difference is gonna be, so uh, if you're interested in High Step, I encourage you to go to our website and just fill in a registration form. There's no cost for that and there's no obligation to participate in anything. Um, it, we just, it's, it's like an intake form where we get information about your company, but there is a section where we do ask, um, because, uh, like the WUSADA, um, program, um, to, uh, participate in STEP and in high step, it, uh, you have to have a product that is at least 51% U.S. Uh, we do, um, give priority and encourage companies that have products that are 51% Hawaii made. So, um, there's a section some people think that high step is only for products because that's probably the majority of the companies that participate are made in Hawaii products, but we do help service companies as well. So there's a section where you fill in some information so you can um, calculate um, the, the Hawaii value of your product. But if you're a service company, there's a, a section when you click that, that also asks like how much of your work is done in Hawaii, just so we get an idea of that. So that would be the only difference between a, a product and a service, but whether your product is a, a ag or non ag, um, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the same process. So an agriculture based product, uh, they're looking for high step assistance. Those companies should contact DBET and not uh, Department of Agriculture. Is that correct? 
if they're interested in high step, but yeah. um, um, certainly HDOA has many products, uh, many services and programs that can help, you know, ag related companies, even beyond what high step has to offer. So I encourage them to also contact um, Great. Yukashi so and Anissa. There's a follow up question to that now. Can you please uh, define what is an agriculture product? Uh, uh, versus um, what, how do you draw the line between an agriculture product and a, and say processed foods or alcohol or that sort of thing? How does that work? Yukashi, do you want to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, agricultural products means have to be grown or raised or grow raised, but Go raise, produce, yeah. Produce, yeah. Uh, you you have to actually put into the effort to cultivate. Um, if you go to the the ocean and the fish or hunt, it it is it is not agricultural products. However, we we have a category. Kind of USDA has a little bit broader definition of agricultural and food. Food is like for human consumption. That's also part of agriculture, I think. And then, but we have pet food category as well. Um, that's also agriculture and feed. Um, so, um, yeah, the the definition of agricultural products are yeah those those yeah raise or grow. Um, uh, not just happen to get our hunt or anything, but um, the process is like a, what whatever you do. If even like a, there's a pineapple, and if you cut and package, that's already processed. So not not just you, you know, um, uh, heat uh, add heat or water or like a mix everything. Uh, anything you change the, the form from the raw material, that's already processed. Okay, uh, great. Uh, let's see, there's just a comment here, um, not really a question, but possibly you could address it. It says one of our, um, our attendees is saying it's the Hawaii Agriculture Foundation, not the Department of Agriculture that limits uh, ag products to a food item. Uh, and then the question is, is a coconut husk an agriculture product? The shell of a coconut could be used for to make uh, activated carbon or it could be used as a container. Um, do you know? Yeah. I believe mean, yes. Okay. It's a, yeah. Because coffee, same thing, right? Outside of coffee, we we sometimes use um, some extract or a sub for the supplement. We recognize that as part of the agricultural product. Oh, interesting. Okay, great. Well, with that, we're uh, just a little bit over time, but thank you to everyone. I'd like to specifically say thank you to uh, Jamie Lum from DBET and uh, uh, we, Thank again, uh, DBET and SBA for the funding that allows us to put these programs on. Uh, thanks to Shurumi Hamasu from Foreign Trade Zone, and she was speaking about Exum, uh, Yukashi and Anissa from the Department of Agriculture. Thank you very much. Uh, Suzanne Schreiner from SHAC, uh, Glenn Sacco from Hawaii County, Ralph uh, Gaston from Rusty's Hawaiian Coffee. Everybody go out and buy some uh, Rusty's Hawaiian Coffee today. And of course, Brian Suzuki from Hawaii Air Cargo. Thanks everyone. I will be sending around to the registered attendees um, the PDFs of any presentations I have from today, as well as um, this agenda with the websites on here. We look forward to seeing you at some of our upcoming events. The only one that is uh, formally scheduled right now is um, our annual Export University 101. That's a uh, a longer event where we have several modules such as finance and legal and logistics, uh, uh, IT and what have you. That's February 2nd and we're excited because that's actually our first um, 
in-person event uh, that we've done in three years because of the pandemic, and that'll be at the Foreign Trade Zone. However, we will be uh, live streaming that through Zoom as well. So please sign up for that event. We look forward to seeing everybody later this year. And thank you again uh, to all of our attendees for joining us this morning and learning about uh, exporting of agricultural products from Hawaii. So mahalo and have a wonderful rest of your day. Mahalo, everyone. Mahalo, Rob. Mahalo. Take care. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.